In the race to conquer the skies, there's a forgotten inventor who might have outpaced the Wright brothers. Meet Charles Frederick Page, a visionary who dared to dream of flying despite facing slavery and racism head on. Join us at Aggressive Intelligence as we reveal the truths of history delving into a story of innovation, bias, and a legacy that was taken, altering aviation history forever. The history of aviation in its early stages can be traced back to ancient times, but significant developments began in the 18th and 19th centuries. In Greek mythology, Daedalus crafted wings for himself and his son Icarus to escape Crete. Icarus flew too close to the sun, melting his wax wings and falling into the sea. Various cultures imagined gods and heroes traveling through the skies in flying chariots, reflecting humanity's long-standing fascination with flight. As early as 400 BCE, the Chinese were building and flying kites, which demonstrated principles of aerodynamics. In the 15th century, Leonardo da Vinci sketched designs for flying machines based on the study of birds, including a helicopter and a hang glider. Though based on poor science, were among the first rational attempts at flight. In the late 18th century, the Montgolfier brothers invented the hot air balloon and began manned flights. Around the same time, the discovery of hydrogen gas led to the invention of the hydrogen balloon. Sir George Cayley laid the foundation for modern aerodynamics in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Cayley's work on gliders provided crucial groundwork for understanding heavier-than-air flight dynamics. Otto Lilienthal, in the late 1800s, created a glider that could fly and published a book on aerodynamics that inspired future aviators. Born in 1864 during America's days of slavery, Charles Frederick Page defied the odds. In an era when educating slaves was discouraged or even illegal, Page showed determination by teaching himself to read and write. This act of defiance wasn't about academics. It was a resistance against a system meant to keep African Americans uninformed and subservient. Despite the challenges of post-Civil War America, where opportunities for black individuals were scarce, it was, within this environment, that Page's groundbreaking ideas took root. Page's interest in aviation was first stirred by an unlikely inspiration, dragonflies. His family recounts how he would sit for hours watching the insects and studying their in-flight acrobatics. Such sharp observation of nature would be a hallmark of his rather unusual approach to flight a few years later. While the Wright brothers were working on heavier-than-air flight with fixed wings, Page was thinking of something altogether different, for his style would be lighter than air, a vessel more resembling an airship or dirigible. This strategy inspired by the natural world exemplifies Page's composite way of thinking and his creative problem-solving skills. By 1903, Page was ready to turn his dragonfly-inspired dream into reality. As the Wright brothers were working on their fixed-wing designs, Page took an entirely different approach. His concept wasn't just another attempt at flight, it was a reimagining of what flying could be. Page's design was based on the principle of lighter-than-air approaches and was much closer to the blimps or zeppelins of modern times than the airplanes we know today. Let us break down the innovative features of Page's airship. Dual Balloon System Unlike the usual design with one balloon, Page incorporated two large gas bags. This wasn't just for showing off, it allowed unprecedented control over both the ascent and the descent. Hybrid design. The airship had a semi-rigid framework that borrowed the finest elements from both rigid and non-rigid designs, yielding high stability. Enclosed cabin. Page included a hull with windows much like a sailboat, a feature well ahead of its time which would eventually become standard in aeronautical design. Propulsion and control. A gas engine drove a propeller wheel at the back and steering was made possible by a rudder. Such a combination of buoyancy, propulsion, and directional control was a great improvement in aeronautical technology. Altitude control. Gas pumps allowed for precise control of the gas volume in the balloons, enabling fine-tuned altitude adjustments. Page's creation wasn't simply groundbreaking, it was truly revolutionary. It introduced an approach to realizing flight blending aspects of both lighter than air and powered flight in an unprecedented manner. In the 1900s, there was a rush to patent designs for flying machines. Charles Page made a move on April 4, 1903, by submitting a patent application for his flying machine, setting the stage for future aviation milestones. This wasn't about paperwork, it was Page asserting his place in the evolution of flight. 
His application predated the Wright brothers' famous flight at Kitty Hawk that year in December. The timing of these events was crucial. By the time the Wright brothers were perfecting their design, Page had already conceptualized and built his innovative airship and filed for protection under the law. Page's dedication paid off on April 10, 1906, when he received patent approval from the U.S. Patent Office for his flying machine. This race for patents underscores an aspect. The history of aviation is more complex than commonly portrayed. While credit rightly goes to the Wright brothers for their accomplishments, it's essential to recognize that others like Page were also pioneers in advancing aviation technology, but often go unnoticed, in narratives. The year 1904 was supposed to be a moment for Charles Frederick Page triumph. The World's Fair in St. Louis, also known as the Louisiana Purchase Exposition, promised to be an event showcasing innovation and progress worldwide. For Page, it was an opportunity to reveal his airship design. The exhibition wasn't any display. It symbolized the culmination of years of hard work, observation, and creativity for Page. He had poured his life savings into developing a model of his airship. After testing it at his residence in Pineville, Louisiana, he was eager to demonstrate his accomplishment to the world. The stakes were high as the fair offered a $100,000 prize, an astronomical amount during that era, for innovative flying machines. Page wasn't merely seeking acknowledgement. He aimed for a victory that would transform his life and solidify his position in aviation history. As Page prepared to ship his model to St. Louis, disaster struck. The airship, along with all of Page's hopes and dreams, vanished en route to the fair. This wasn't just a case of misplaced luggage. Page's daughter, Eva, would later claim the invention had been stolen. The prevailing belief supported by the racial climate of the time is that this was an act of sabotage, a deliberate attempt to keep a black inventor from claiming his rightful place in history. It had been devastating both emotionally and financially. He had poured all that he had into that one work, and in one cruel twist, everything was taken away. This act of theft robbed Page not only of his invention, it also robbed the world of the most pioneering advancement in aviation technology ever conceived at that time. The incident involving the theft of Page's airship model serves as an illustration of the challenges and bias that black inventors encountered during the 20th century. This event significantly impacted Page's career in aviation, prompting him to shift his focus from inventing towards other pursuits. The prevailing environment of supremacy during that period was marked by a deprivation of acknowledgement and opportunities for black individuals. This lack of recognition also extended to their creative accomplishments with black inventors facing marginalization, disregard, or even theft of their work. According to Joseph Page, the grandson of Charles Page after the loss of the airship, Page prioritized taking care of his family. Joseph expressed, he never saw another chance to gather funds again while ensuring his family's well-being, hence he chose not to pursue it. He engaged in various entrepreneurial activities, demonstrating the same resilience and adaptability that had allowed him to teach himself to read and write. The shift towards community and family responsibilities reflects a recurring theme in the stories of inventors during that era. There was need to adapt and explore alternative avenues for success in response to systemic racism. Although Charles Page may have given up his quest to fly, very recently his contributions have been acknowledged. A historical landmark was dedicated in Pineville, the town where Page lived, and where he had invented, as a testament to the contribution he had made towards flying. Looking toward a future of innovation and exploration, we must also look back to recognize the unsung pioneers like Charles Frederick Page. Their stories remind us that progress is not a straight line, and that in many cases, the most remarkable achievements have come where people have overcome the greatest obstacles. Thanks for joining us on Aggressive Intelligence to explore Charles Frederick Page's groundbreaking work in aviation. If you enjoyed this video, then hit the like button, comment below, and subscribe to our channel for more hidden histories and untold stories. Remember, the truth is often more complex and more fascinating than we've been led to believe. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep pushing the boundaries of what you think you know.